Come on, intercessors, help me bring it through. We come against now. Every plan of the enemy. Every trick of the enemy. That will try, oh God. The sabotage. The next move of God. Straight in the blood. The blood of Jesus is against you now. We declare and decree that we've been given permission to take off. We declare and decree that the runway has been cleared and that this is our time to take off. Somebody say take off. Somebody say take off. Shake heaven that will shift the atmosphere. Come on, clap. 
the phone just rang. Act like you just cracked the good news. Act like the doctor just said, no more cancer. Mouth gets free. Elevation. I dare somebody to celebrate. the earth 
is groaning for the true manifestation. I feel God in here of the sons of God to be revealed. I want you to touch someone on the side of you. I say God is waiting on the manifestation of the gift that he has placed on the inside of you. Let him pick up your spirit. Pick up your prayer life. Pick up your worship. Pick up your time of consecration. Pick it up. Pick it up. Pick it up. Do not allow the enemy to confuse you in this season. In this season of distraction. Where the world, where the world eyes globally is on the church. We root up the demon that's trying to bring deception to the kingdom of God. We root up the demon that's trying to bring confusion to the opportunities of God. We root up every word. Oh, I need some intercession in here because the devil is on an agenda and his agenda is to confuse the people of the world and cause them to not want to come to know our God. But somebody say the devil oh, I fear power. The devil is a liar. Yes, he is a liar. Yes, he is a liar. Yes, he is a liar. The church will be the church again. The church of the living God will be relevant again. The church of the living God will be on a mountain top again. The church of the living God will be the solution to the answer. That God got me. The church. Somebody go ahead and cover spiritual leaders. Cover pastors. Cover bishops. Cover pastors. But the enemy is on a rampage. And he's seeking whom he may devour. But I pray that we as the people, we are covered in the blood of Jesus. We have the spirit of discernment to be able to know that which is evil and that which is good for upon this rock I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail I want us to shut every illegal access down shut down the negative thoughts shut down the words we call out everyone that has been overtaken by a fault. The Bible says we are to restore such a one. But our oh Jesus, our oh Jesus, our oh Jesus, let us not be caught up in the world. Let us not be caught up in the conversations. Let us not be caught up in what we think our opinions, but I'm looking for a righteous people that will stand for holiness and that will stand for righteousness. We call on the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We call on the church that was birthed in the book of Acts, where things, where, where things begin to break out, when the Holy Spirit descended, we call forth the supernatural works of the Lord, the shut down flesh, we call forth the supernatural intervention of the Lord, the shut down Every false prophet, yakata tak na se, rekete yandi de yasai. We give him glory, we give him praise. If you believe that the church is about to rise like never yet before, that the church is about to gain its influence again. If you believe 
that the church is about to become one of the places where men and women will long to be because of the power that will run through the church. We cover every leader. We cover every pastor. We cover every spiritual leader. We cover every prophet. We cover every prophetess. We cover everyone that name the name of God. That name the name of Christ. We cover them in the blood of Jesus. And we say no weapon form will be able to prosper. But oh God, you say touch none my anointed and do my prophets no harm oh Jesus oh Jesus oh Jesus where the spirit of ignorance has crept in the body of Christ we repent for touching what we didn't understand we repent for speaking out on what you didn't tell us to speak out on we repent Jesus, we repent, Jesus. We are no better than the next person. We are all your people. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Somebody give him glory for mercy, for favor, for not allowing the enemy to triumph over us. Somebody give him glory. Somebody give him glory. Somebody give him glory. I break the spirit of condemnation from off the body of Christ. I break the spirit of guilt and shame from off the body of Christ. I come spirit of liberty to hit the people like never yet before. May you be free in your worship. May you be free in your praise. May you be free from your past. Free from your mistakes. Somebody lift your hands and say, Lord, I receive freedom. Freedom, freedom, for the last few seconds, lift your hands to him, lift your hands to him, the mercy of God, it's resting on us for 2024, the unmerited favor, it's resting on us for 2024, everything that you think you didn't deserve, God say get ready, for a season of undeserved favor, undeserved blessings, undeserved doors. I just see about five doors kick out that has been locked in your face. God said, every door that has been locked, this is the year of the unlocking. This is the year of the unlocking every code that you need to unlock receive it now receive it now receive it now receive it now somebody give God praise come on give him glory come on if you believe everything that we have prayed before the Lord Come on, if you believe that this is a year of answered prayer, go ahead and give God glory. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in that sight. And if you believe it is so, how about you put those hands together? Come on, but don't just do them because I told you to. Can we do it in anticipation? That God has already answered every prayer that we've already petitioned him for tonight. Come on, somebody put those hands together. Come on, do it like you're already expecting God. Yeah. Come on, let's declare. If you don't.
the greatness of you. Oh, let's do it now. So I'll sing of your love. I will sing of your love. And I will tell the whole world of the greatness of you, yeah. One more time, say, I want to sing of your love. I want to sing of your love. Yeah, 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 yeah. I want to sing of your mercy. Anybody want to tell the whole world? Want to tell the whole world. Of the greatness of our God, yeah. Of the greatness of you. The kingdoms of this world be the kingdoms of our God, so I'll sing, so I'll sing of your love. I will sing till I have no more reason to do so, and I'll sing of your mercy, and I'll tell the whole world, and I'll tell the whole world, somebody just tell them how great the God that we serve is, hey. the greatness of you, come on and tell us, say, Jesus, we let It's about you. Jesus, we lift up your name. Jesus, we lift up your name. Jesus, we lift up your name. Lord, we come to lift you up. We give you praise and lift you up. In everything we lift you up. Because your name is higher than the heavens and greater than the nations. Jesus, say, Lord, we come. Lord, we come to lift you up. Give you praise. Give you praise and lift you up. In everything. In everything we lift you up. Say, your name is higher. Your name is higher than the heavens. And greater than the greater nation. Than the nation. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Somebody lift up. That name. Jesus, your, your name, name is higher than the heavens, greater than the greater nation, than the nation. Jesus, 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 one more time, so Lord, we come to, Lord, we come to lift you up, give you praise, give you praise, and lift so Lord, you up. we come to lift, every time to lift you up, give you 
your hands in the presence of the Lord. I feel his glory in this room. AJ, give me some more here, please. And with your hands lifted up, just release your worship in this room. Come on, fill this room. Fill this room. Fill this room. Fill this room. Oh, bless your name, Jesus. Oh, bless your name, Jesus. Come on, let your worship, let your worship, let your worship, let your worship rise, 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 let your, let me hear the voices, let me hear the voices, let your worship rise, let your worship rise, let your worship rise, let your worship rise. Mande be de kota bada si antalaba. Embra handolo bohumbre his kibra hataba. Kumbre hen si bra hatalaba han sere de osha. Embra haradaba si andolo bohora bahansia. Somebody lift your voice. Come on, let's create an atmosphere for what God is about to do in this room. I need you to lift the worship of anticipation expectation for what God is about to do. Let's create a climate in this room for miracles, for signs, for wonders, for tumors to dry up, for cancer to be rebuked, for demonic powers to be broken. I need you to lift your voice in this room. Tonight God positions you for the rest of 2024. Come on. Come on. I need you to lift the worship of that expectation expectation before he ever said let there be the bible says that the spirit of god moved upon the face of the deep somebody give him worship there's about to be a movement of the spirit in this place there's about to be a movement of the spirit in this place 
Glory. 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 We almost there. We almost there. I just need you to push a little further. Mama da bakata bahan sebe de osha. Hombre here de biansa. Deep calls unto deep tonight. Those of you with high expectations, I need you to lift your voice. Let heaven hear you tonight. Oh, my sita. Let heaven hear your sound tonight. Holy Spirit, we commit this atmosphere to you. Throw your weight around in this room. Fill this place with your glory. Hmm. Fill this place with your glory. The next 12 months for someone depends on what happens in this place tonight. The next 24 months depends on what happens in this place tonight. Move in this place. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. We bless your name. Can you lift up a praise in advance and anticipation for what God is about to do in this place tonight? That's a little bit too quiet for me. I need you to ring. That's too loud, AJ. I need you to open your mouth and praise him at the level of your expectation. Oh, bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank the glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we are so privileged, so highly favored, so blessed of the Lord to have one of the most brilliant minds one of the kingdom's greatest strategists, one of the most impactful, influential leaders of our time in our midst on tonight. <clears throat> Coupled with all I've said, one of the things I appreciate most about this gift it's the oil of God that remains upon his life. That you could be brilliant. You could be impactful. You can be influential and still be spiritual. And still be anointed. It's an obvious sense of the mantle of prayer. And consecrated, consecration on this gift from God. He has been a blessing to this church throughout the years under the leadership of our founding bishop who is with us on tonight, and we thank God for him. <clears throat> he has blessed people the world over. All of us know him. All of us love him, and we appreciate him. Without further ado, let's put our hands together and give God the praise as we receive God's messenger for tonight in the person of Dr. Jamal Harrison Bryant. Let's hear the word of the Lord on tonight.
bless the Lord. Would you remain standing for just one moment if you'll take your neighbor by the hand and go stretch out even across the aisles. In Atlanta at New Birth, where I'm privileged to serve, we have declared that 2024 is the year of answered prayers. I want you, whoever's hand you're holding, would you look at him and tell him this year, all of your prayers are going to be answered. It is at the core of my conviction that God will answer your prayers quicker. Listen to me. He'll answer your prayers quicker when you learn how to pray for somebody else. God cannot trust the selfish. But when you release yourself with the confidence that God listens to my voice and will respond to it for somebody else's situation, uh, it is uh, what we know as uh, intercession. Tonight we are going to embark and engage in the gift of intercession for one minute. Listen to me, you are angelically assigned to the person whose hand you're holding. You are not sitting next to them by accident. Whoever's hand you're holding, would you look at him and ask him, do you mind if I pray for you tonight? Listen to me. You're going to pray for them, and here's what is amazing. I hope you'll uh, catch the same level of enthusiasm that I'm riding on tonight. You're going to pray for them, and here's what you're going to pray. Listen to me. You're going to pray that whatever you've been praying for, God will give to them first. Did, did y'all hear what I just said? Whatever you've been praying for, I want God to give it to them first because I have so much confidence that he's going to do it. Here it is. It's going to break the spirit of competition. It's going to break the spirit of jealousy. Here it is because when God answers that prayer, I know I've got a hand in your success. i got a hand in your destiny. All over this sanctuary, those of you who are in the balcony, those of you who are on the main floor, those of you who are joining us online, I want us to uh, engulf the atmosphere with the sound of intercession. I don't want you to mumble or to murmur. I want you to pray with the, the de declarative authority that you know you serve a prayer answering God. All heads about, all eyes are closed. Would you open up your mouth and begin praying for the person whose hand you're holding? Come on, I need you to turn it up just a little bit. That God will bless their children. God will bless their marriage. God will bless their health. God will bless their finances. That God will open new doors of opportunity. That God will unleash spiritual gifts. That they'll be able to eat off of the fruit of the Spirit. Come on, you only got 10 seconds left. That their enemies will become their footstools. That in the time of trouble, God will hide them. That even if their mother and father forsook them, that God is going to lift them up. And we declare it to be so in Jesus' name. Would you loose that hand and give God your best sound of thanksgiving? Come on, come on, open up your mouth. Your prayer is about to be answered. Your prayer is about to be answered. You didn't hear what I just said. Your prayer is about to be answered. I don't know how y'all that choir. Come on, Mount Tabor.
pull on the glory. Make a mandate in the earth for what you expect out of heaven. Your prayer is about to be answered. I wonder if you'll shout about this. Before January is over, everything you just spoke is about to come to pass. Bless his name. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. At the risk of looking crazy, would you just talk to yourself and say, my prayers are getting ready to be answered. Oh, I can't hear nobody. I said, my prayers are getting ready to be answered. The prayers I forgot about. The prayers I thought it was too late for me to get. The prayers I thought I was disqualified from. Five of you ought to shout over this. The prayers my mama prays are getting ready to be answered this year. I believe it by faith. I, uh, I am so grateful. I am so grateful, Pastor, for letting me to come back home. I feel like Dorothy. I done clicked my heels three times, and I didn't end up in Kansas. I'm in NASA. Thank you so very much uh, for letting me uh, come home. I want to say uh, just a couple of words in route to a sacred text uh, on tonight. Our pastor has uh, signed my permission slip uh, for me to be at home tonight, and so uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be able to do that. This is the very first time I've come to Mount Tabor as the position as big brother. This is the first time. I, I feel so free. <laughs> Amen. Um, I, I want to say a, uh, a couple of things, and... Uh, Visitors, you can zone out for just a moment. I, I just need to have a family meeting at the dinner table. Um, it is uh, amazing for our young people who are here. Uh, you would know that uh, hip hop is 50 years old. Hip hop is 50 years old. And uh, the whole um, culture as we know it of black mega churches is only 40 which means, Pastor, rap music is older than mega churches. Uh, in the span of 40 years, only five, um, six black mega churches have transitioned. Only six black mega churches have uh, transitioned from uh, Bishop G.E. Patterson, uh, Dr. Uh, Fred Casey Price, uh, Pastor John Cherry, uh, Bishop uh, Eddie Long, uh, Dr. Charles Blake. That's five. All right. Six, Mount Tabor. No. No. The reason why I bring that to bear tonight, because I want you to understand the weight of this assignment and uh, the weight of what I'm trying to say that really demands your prayers. Of those six, your pastor and myself, of those six, in 40 years, your pastor and myself are the only two who have taken over mega churches, listen to me, that were not relatives. Uh, to, to be able to walk into something that was not in our genealogy but was in our apostolic bloodline to know that the Bible is true. I will give you houses you did not build, that you will eat of a harvest that you did not plant. I hope you know, Mount Tabor, how spoiled you are. You ain't even blessed. Y'all are spoiled uh, that you are able to see Moses and Joshua in the same room. I need you to do me a favor. Would you just upset the enemy? Would you give God glory for God continuing the mantle of an amazing ministry? I am, uh, I can only say this at Mount Tabor. It's the only place I can say this is at Mount Tabor. I am so jealous of your pastor. <laughs> Y'all think I'm joking. I am so jealous of your pastor, and I haven't even said it to him, 
uh, is that he doesn't even know how spoiled he is. Delton, because your pastor has the privilege I have never had. I have never in my four years at New Birth ever been able to call my predecessor. To be able to get on the phone, the person who had the vision and know what it is that God put on their heart and to build off of that is a privilege. The only thing that I get to do is hope and assume that my predecessor is pleased to know that the vision is going forward. I don't want you ever, Mount Tabor, to take for lightly or take for granted that you have your founder in your room. Because what nobody will ever tell you is the biggest pastor's anniversary the biggest pastor's anniversary, the largest pastor's anniversary in the black church is always the pastor's funeral. They don't know how to celebrate him while he's alive, but they mourn after him after he's transitioned. What an amazing gift of God for us to come into church tonight that God has allowed our founder, here it is, not in a wheelchair, not in crutches, not on oxygen. Is that all y'all got? I said God done spoiled you. Come on, help me. Uh, I am uh, just thankful uh, for his life and thankful for his light. Much of uh, uh, Jeremiah Wright said, it's all right to be a copycat if you know which cat to copy. Uh, and so uh, I have stolen so much from Bishop Ellis. Uh, and uh, I'm just grateful that I haven't been arrested for grand larceny. Uh, but I'm, I'm just appreciative for him. I want to take a, a moment uh, just to uh, thank God uh, for your pastor. Uh, and thank God for his life. It is um, an unbelievable, it is an unbelievable task to follow greatness. It's an unbelievable task. Isn't it amazing uh, that Michael Jordan, uh, out of all of his sons, none of them could go professional? Isn't it amazing that Ronald Reagan only had one son and he ended up being a ballerina. No, I'm telling you the truth. It's, it, it, it is hard. Listen to me. I don't even mean that figuratively. I mean that literally. It is hard to be the son of a success. Because you are able to eat of your father's success without ever dining on your father's struggle. Uh, for what it is that uh, our pastor has been able to do in just one year in the looming shadow of a living legend. I am just so thankful. Come on, help me thank God for him. Come on, thank God for him. I ask that uh, you would uh, remain steadfast in your prayers for him uh, because uh, it is a tap dance. He ain't always going to get it right. It's not always going to sing your tune. It's not always going to be how you like it uh, because uh, the only people that like changes wet babies. <laughs> Everybody else wants everything to remain the same. Uh, and so, Pastor, I want to salute you. Uh, for this transitional year and uh, thank you for honoring our founder come on give God a hand clap of praise for both of them amen if you have your Bibles would you join me tonight in the book of Acts ask that every person would you stand for the reading of God's word Acts chapter 12 Verse number 16. 
Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts. Amen. I don't know how you lost with a Bible app. Amen. Come on. Acts chapter 12, verse number 16. But be, Peter kept on knocking. And when they opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. You may be seated. But Peter kept on uh, knocking. When they opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. I want to preach tonight using as a subject, raise your expectations. Raise your expectation. Would you help me preach? Look at the person beside you and tell them, this year, you must raise your expectations. Monte boy, you might be surprised how many people don't like surprises. Just at the word surprise, they immediately conjure the thought of somebody jumping out of a closet or somebody showing up unannounced. There's a part of our brain called uh, the amygdala. And the amygdala has to work overtime in a surprise to decipher and discern whether this is something positive or negative. Our minds, Pastor, our minds only appreciate what we understand. We don't understand it, then we reject it. A surprise has resistance around it because it disrupts routine. It kidnaps your sense of control and it leaves you vulnerable to the reactions that you never want exposed in public. That's why all of us in this room, all of us in this room have at least one friend. We got one friend that will insist, just tell me what it is. They don't want to be surprised. Elbow your neighbor if you're the one friend I'm talking about. The last year has been riddled with surprises. We never thought that 25,000 people would be dead in Palestine. Been riddled with surprises. We never thought there would be more people dead in the Congo, hear this, than the amount of people that live in the Bahamas. We never thought that the Ukraine would get more funding than what it takes to stop homelessness in the Western world. But friends, you can turn off CNN and read the headlines of your own life and talk about all of the surprises that you've had to endure. You never in a million years thought that you would be a single parent. Never thought that you would have to take care of aging parents. You never thought that you would be betrayed by somebody you once called friend. You never thought you would receive the phone call that a loved one died. You were absolutely taken off guard that the doctor had to up your medication. You were completely thrown off that you can't lose weight like you used to. Forrest Gump said, uh, life is like a box of chocolate. You never know what you're going to get. I'm telling you, I don't know how it is that you're able to sit there calm, cool, and collected as if you don't believe you are on the mind of God. Can you imagine that in this moment, God is conspiring for you to have an unfair advantage? 
Can you believe that God is whispering your name in the ears of influential people? I can tell y'all don't believe it. Can you believe that God is going to open doors of opportunity for your children that you would have never had for yourself? You really don't believe that God can heal your body without a surgery. You still don't think that God can stop cancer cells from spreading. You, you don't believe that God will block you from dementia and from Alzheimer's and from Parkinson's. That while you're sitting right there, God is going to stop heart attacks and stop strokes and make it so that you don't need hip replacement or knee replacement that you'll never need a hearing aid or occupational therapy that you'll never be in the hospice you won't be rushed to Florida to see a doctor but God said right where you are a surprise is getting ready to happen speaking of um, unscripted occurrences you gotta see what took place in Acts chapter 12 when King Herod arrested children of God and wanted to terrorize them because there is nothing that gives secular people greater delight than seeing anointed people in a bind. There are so many people who hope you don't recover who hope you never get your standing, hope that you never get your bearing, hope you never recoup everything that you lost. But I need you to see what happens in Acts chapter 12. You're going to be utterly amazed and thrown off. Is that King Herod, hear this, kills James. He kills James and he is so full of it. Here it is, that he turns around and kills John. I don't want this to uh, slip past you too quickly. But I wanted you to be mindful of something that uh, I don't even really think that you have put the high power objective on. Tonight, something supernatural is going to take place uh, that is not material or tangible. But God sent me from Atlanta to interrupt something in the spirit realm that I needed you to uh, take full hold of. Watch! What King Herod does. King Herod kills James and then kills his brother John. Hallelujah. Pastor, I'm looking at the text. I'm familiar with it. I don't even know what it is that uh, you're trying to share with me tonight. I came here uh, tonight not uh, for a sermon but really for a declaration. Uh, because I needed to interrupt something uh, that the enemy tried to do in 23. I need you to listen to me, Balcony. Don't you jump over. I need you to hear this. In 2023, there was a satanic assignment. Hear this on your sibling. The enemy was trying to do all that he could to kill your brother or your sister. And he had the intention that if I can wipe out your sibling, that you will be next. I don't know where you are because some of y'all only know how to shout over cars and over money. But God said, when I hear the sound of glory tonight, I am putting a force field of a protection. Watch this around your sibling. I don't know what your brother is going through. I don't know what your sibling is dealing with. But God says it will not come to pass. Your sister will not be depressed. Your brother will not be an alcoholic. I can't hear nobody. But God said tonight I need you to go to war for your siblings. Satan, you can't have my brother. Satan, you can't have my sister. I cancel PTSD. I cancel anxiety. I cancel every obsessive disorder. The stronghold of every demonic principality that has been aimed at my sibling is destroyed tonight. If you got a sister that's been going through, you better open up your mouth on their behalf. You got a brother that needs 
needs a breakthrough. God said, watch it happen on their behalf. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of our God. I feel glory coming in three minutes. She can Hey, hey, hey. I feel it coming right in this room. If you got crazy faith, I need you to speak the names of your living siblings out loud. Speak their name out now. Hey, Satan was going up and down looking for somebody to devour. Have you considered their sibling? And Satan got to say in 24, there's a hedge fence, a protection around there. I can't get to their sibling. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of our God. Hallelujah. He killed siblings. And he was not satisfied with killing siblings. And so he, um, he issued a warrant for the arrest of Peter. And the thing that is quirky about that is um, he arrested Peter during the season of unleavened bread. This is uh, where it is that they hallmark uh, 400 years of being in slavery. God making a way. Uh, this is a celebratory season. And yet King Herod opts to put Peter in jail. I want you to understand something and I hope that you'll be able to receive it. Is the enemy always wants to interrupt sustained happiness. Hallelujah. And uh, you have been so triggered by trauma. That you don't even allow yourself to celebrate good news. Because you think it's too good to be true. But God said this year between now and December 31st. I don't care what phone call you get, what text message you receive, what letter shows up in the mail. There will be nothing that arises that will disrupt your peace. Hallelujah. I wish I was at Mount Tabor tonight. I want you to lift up that hand. I want to speak something over your life. I speak over your life. Uninterrupted peace. Softly musicians, watch this. In this season, in this season, you are for the first time in a long time going to have uninterrupted, here's your shout, sleep. You don't even know the last time you got eight hours. But God says, I'm going to put you to sleep at night. Because while you sleep, I'm already working it out for what's going to happen the next day. Your peace is about to be restored. They arrested Peter. And when they arrested Peter, ladies and gentlemen, he's one man who is anointed. He's one man that is anointed, and uh, when they arrest him, they do not just send one arresting officer. They send 16. They send 16 to arrest one man. I remember um, I was going through a storm, and I called my dad, Bishop Bryant, and uh, I called him. I said, Dad, it's unfair that I'm dealing with all of this. This is crazy. Yeah, I'm dealing with this. And uh, my dad, Bishop Bryant, said to me, Oh, Jamal, I'm so disappointed in you. I said, you disappointed in me? I'm the one being attacked. He says, I'm disappointed in you because it is obvious to me you still don't know who you are. If you were regular, the attack wouldn't be so great. Oh my God. The enemy does not hate you off of possessions. He despises you based off of potential. Oh my God. You, you need to know that nobody ever told us that even demons have the gift of discernment. And they can sense that the greatness on you, if it ever gets unleashed, will transform an entire generation. 
I don't know whether you're on the balcony or on the floor. You know you are anointed if there are at least 16 people watching you. They hope that you're going to lose your mind. They hope that you're going to throw in the towel. They're hoping that you're going to quit. But every time you walk in that office, I need you to walk like God sent me and say, after all that I've been through, I still got you. About 16 people are watching you to see how you're going to deal with your setback. How you're going to deal with the clutches of financial strain. 16 people are watching to see what you're going to do now that your child is in trouble. 16 people are watching you to see how you're going to respond because your body is under attack. And here's what I need you to know. All of your enemies are not outside of the church. God help me. There's some people in here right now. They know your business and they've been waiting for you to stop coming to church and to stop worshiping. But I got 20 that got the conviction. I will bless the Lord at all times. Would you do me a favor? If you going through something but you don't care who looks at you, would you just bless him right there? Come on. Oh, y'all ain't going through nothing. I said bless him while you're going through. Bless him while you're going through. Bless him while you're going through. He been better to me than I have been to myself. I still will bless him. There's a heart left in the text. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a heart left in the text that I, uh, I want you to zoom in on. Is that uh, Peter's arrested and there's 16 guards that are assigned to him. And y'all ain't going to believe what happens next. What happens next is that the church starts praying. This is where it gets powerful. Is the church starts praying, y'all ain't gonna believe it, for somebody who's not there. They praying for somebody who ain't in the church, but's in a bind. Hallelujah. It doesn't say the pastor. It doesn't say the intercessors, not the elders, but the whole church goes into prayer. God help me, the ushers, the greeters, the people in the praise team, those who were in media, they begin praying, here it is, for somebody who ain't there, that they're going to be able to come out of it. I want to replicate that same blueprint out of scripture. We get ready to pray tonight, and you've already prayed for the person beside you that is no longer your prayer assignment. You are now getting ready to pray, hear this, for somebody who is not in church. Hallelujah. That before this week is over, something is going to shift in there. I don't know why y'all acting stuck up like this. But if I can get 50 of you to just begin to travail right there. Like you need God to do something. But you already know who they are. Would you open up your mouth? Come on, pull on it right there. I need to hear the sound of intercessors. I need to hear those who know just a little talk with Jesus will make everything all right. I need those of you who know late in the midnight hour, God will turn it around. Would you open up your mouth and pray for him? Hallelujah. Bless his holy name. Listen to me. With no music for one moment, I just need to hear the sound of prayer warriors. I need you to pray for that child that done dropped out of school. I need you to pray for your nephew who keeps going in and out of the court system. I need you to pray for that niece who's in love with the streets. I need you to pray for that significant other who done moved to the States and gone wild. I need you to pray for the oldest member of your family who's shackled with physical impropriety. The Bible says that the whole church is praying. And when the whole church starts praying, 
something gets triggered in heaven. Because the whole church is praying. Something gets triggered around the throne. Angels are circling around the throne and they only are deputized to say one word, glory. Hallelujah. Somebody just shout the word glory. Hallelujah. If they're on their best behavior, he feeds them another word. Hallelujah. Come on, I can't hear nobody in here, would you? Come on, open up your mouth. Give him the glory. Give him the glory. Give him the highest praise. Come on. Give him the glory. Give him the highest praise. I'm, I'm almost where I'm trying to go. Give him the glory. Give him the highest praise. While the angels are, are flapping their wings around the throne of heaven. And Yahweh dispatches one of them. And that one angel, he sends, watch this, into the jail cell. He comes into the jail cell and says to, uh, says to Peter, not lift your hands. He doesn't come into jail cell with a vial or a flask of oil. He only comes um, with two words. And the two words that he gives to Peter, hear this, is get up! Hallelujah. The angel comes in and startles Peter with just two words. Get up! Something crazy happens, Mount Tabor. You ain't going to believe it unless you read Acts chapter 12. Is that when Peter responds to the angelic directive, get up. Everything that had him shackled falls off of him. God help me. He don't have to do nothing but get up. Everything that weighed him down is now released off of him by following the instructions. Balcony is just me and y'all in the room. The people on the floor not getting with me. Y'all got to hold me down. God says, whatever held you down in 23, when you get up, it's falling up off of you. I don't know where my worshipers are, but God said, when you got up, poverty fell off of you. When you got up, depression fell off of you. When you got up, loneliness and grief got off of you. He gets up. Listen to me. He gets up and everything that's on him falls off. And if the chains just fell off, that would be significant enough. But the chains did not just fall off. The chains fell off. I hope 30 of you will stick with me. But when the chains fell off, then a door opened. I got the wrong church. I better make an announcement. For those of y'all acting stuck up, this ain't for you. This ain't your night. But God said, if you get up and worship me, I'm opening the biggest door of your life. Come on, I can't hear you. I'm telling you, you ain't got an interview for this. You don't need a letter recommendation for this. A door is getting ready to open for you. All right, let me say it another way. God said, if you give me glory, y'all better shout off of this. I'm opening a door for your children. I'm opening a door for your grandchildren. Every door they shut is about to be open on your behalf. Chains are falling off and doors are open. Hallelujah. Doors get ready to open. You may be seated. I'm almost finished. Hallelujah. I'm Thank you, Holy God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just need five of you to just shout out loud. The door's getting ready to open. 
if you don't need it don't say nothing but I I need you to just spread a rumor down your row a door is getting ready to open I hope you are ready for it over the next couple of weeks God is gonna make it up to you for what you dealt with in the last four years a door is getting ready to open uh, I feel it right here thank you Holy Ghost he said the doors get better to open for five of y'all that don't mind shouting he said the door you should have had but it was closed because of COVID I can't hear nobody a door is getting ready to open don't worry about whether you got a degree or whether you got a background or whether you got experience God said the favor on your life is getting ready to open the door a door is getting ready to open I can tell, I can tell why it is that you're not shouting. It's because I missed a critical, crucial variable that is so important to this. Is that an angel came. Here it is. Chains fell off. A door opened. But here's what is amazing, Pastor. And it wasn't because of Peter's prayer. Oh my God. All of that happened on the strength of somebody else's prayer. Hallelujah. You know how you just shouted um, over the prospect and the possibility of a door open? You did all of that shouting and all of that exclamation because you thought it was your door. I came to kill a demon tonight. But God says, I want to see if you'll have that same level of enthusiasm. If that door ain't for you, come on. I need you to shout for your best friend's door. Hey, hey. I dare you to shout for your childhood friend's door. I, I need you to shout for your friend's child's door. This ain't even my door, but I'm shouting for you. I gotta ratchet up just three more notches and we get ready to go. And when Peter comes out of the jail, Lord help me to preach it right. When Peter comes out of the jail, he does not go and um, find something to eat. No, that ain't, that ain't what he does. He doesn't go to tell off the people that had him arrested. Y'all ain't gonna like this. He goes to the place that was praying for him. I want y'all to get ready for this because I need you to see it in your spirit eye. I need you to go beyond the natural. Here it is. Is that when Peter gets out of jail, gets out of the bind, when the chains fall off, when the door opens, he heads to the place that was praying for him. Pastor, I don't even know what you're saying. I'm telling you, brace yourself. Because people in your family who swore they were never coming back to church, I can't hear nobody, folk that had given up on God and given up on the faith. Here's what I need y'all to shout about. I need you to shout like you see them getting saved. Hey, come on. I need you to shout like they get filled with the Holy Ghost. I need you to shout like they begin speaking in other tongues and begin laying hands on the sick. Come on, I need somebody to look down your row and tell them they're coming back. They're coming back. They're coming back to the choir. They're coming back to the usher bar. They're coming back to the ministry. They're coming back to the faith. He gets to where it is that they're praying. And... uh 
Something amazing happens in our text that I got to flash a uh, high beam on. The Bible says in one verse that uh, Peter knocked on the door. Peter knocked on the door. That's what it says in one verse. I'm in Acts chapter 12. The next verse said, uh, and Rhoda heard his voice. Listen to me. It says, Peter knocked on the door. The next verse says, and she heard his voice. All right. It's been a long day. Y'all came straight from work. Y you ain't had no rest. It says, uh, Peter knocks on the door. And the little girl heard his voice. God help me. <laughs> He's knocking on the door, Mount Tabor, but never uses his hands. His voice is what's knocking on the door. I, I got the wrong church. I, I done made up in my mind in 2024 I ain't begging nobody to shout but God says when I hear your voice it means you need a door to be open if you don't need God to open a door don't knock on it but if you got an urgent matter open up your mouth like you need the door to be open come on come on open up your mouth open up your mouth open up your mouth come on knock on it knock on it knock on it y'all still ain't knocking good i feel my bishop right here who is the king of glory the lord mighty in battle lift up your hand oh ye gates be ye lifted up that the king come on knock on it knock on it knock on it it's about to open up knock on it you may be seated Hallelujah. You may be seated. Rhoda won't even open the door. She goes to the so-called intercessors and she reports to them who you've been praying for is at the door. They say, girl, you crazy. Here it is, um, they were praying that night. You ain't going to believe it. They are praying that night because the trial was supposed to be tomorrow. Are y'all here? They prayed that night because the trial is supposed to be tomorrow. Hallelujah. Because of who you prayed for tonight. Oh my God. They not going to have to go through the trial tomorrow. I'm so sick of y'all. I don't know what's wrong with you. You just cancel whatever they were supposed to go through tomorrow. Because you prayed for them tonight. The trial is over. She goes to them. It says, the one that you all have been praying for is at the door. And they, they shush you away. It says, ain't no way that it has happened for us. Here it is. That it has happened for us. Here's the catch. That it has happened for us the same night we pray. We used to next year this time. We didn't know it was going to happen the same night. 
we didn't have that level of expectation. Oh my God. I flew to the Bahamas tonight to tell you, raise your expectation. God, help me balcony. I'm still waiting on y'all to wake up. God said, if you got faith, the same night you pray is the same night you gonna get an answer. If the same night is going to manifest, it's the same night that it's going to appear. Be seated. I uh, only got one last point and then uh, I'm going. Would you be seated for just one moment, please, for just one moment. I have uh, sobering bad news. I have sobering bad news. I'll, I'll leave you here. Sobering bad news. I'm telling you, you ain't even going to like it. You're going to be mad that a new pastor brought me. <laughs> yeah. This is not the word that any of you wanted to hear. I go a step further um, to tell you this probably was not the sermon you wanted to jumpstart. I'm telling you, it's going to mess you up. Um, but I, um, I, I, I want to give you an unconventional word tonight. The word that I've been dispatched from heaven to release to you tonight is that this is not your year. Listen to me. And what I say next will be the evidence, the rubric, or the guideposts of your maturity. This is not going to be your year. I'm going to say it again. You don't like it. This is not your year. God, help me. I'm telling you, nine demons are getting ready to die tonight. God said, this is going to be the year, here's your shout, for who you prayed for. Oh my God. I can't hear nobody. If you love God enough to believe God going to do it for them, I want y'all to tear this church up that I'm so excited that somebody else gets a year that somebody else gets a chance that somebody else gets an opportunity if he don't do nothing else for me he's done enough but I need him to bless my brother I need him to bless my sister I need them to bless my friend. Raise. Raise your expectation. I got twin girls. And uh, when I first started coming here, Mount Tabor, we brought them here in blankets. Twin girls for Bishop to bless them, pray over. And my twin girls are uh, graduating from high school in June. And uh, identical twins. Identical twins. And uh, the oldest one is Angel, the youngest one is Adore. And uh, Angel called me about two weeks ago. He said, Daddy, I got to tell you something. I said, what is it? She said, uh, I got accepted in the Hampton. I said, oh, that's great. That's great. Uh, and I said, uh, uh, that's great news. Uh, where's Angel? She said, no, don't tell Angel. I said, your twin sister? 
I said, yeah, we're we not going to tell her yet. I said, why? I said, uh, because uh, she hadn't heard back from her school yet. And I don't, I don't want her to know my news till I know her news. Uh, Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Uh, two weeks later, uh, Angel got accepted in the Spelman. So I said, Lord, uh, they're going to they split my girls up. And uh, somehow the rumor must have got back to Hampton that one of them got accepted to Spelman. So they sent another letter. <laughs> sent another letter. Says, uh, we're accepting both of you. Watch this. Paying half your tuition, half your room and board. Uh, Y'all ain't saying nothing still. But the release for both of them didn't happen until it was the humility out of one of them. God, I can't hear nobody. At the end of the day, they both got it. They both got the money. Y'all ain't saying nothing. They both got accepted. They both got somewhere to live. But when you know how to go in a back seat for somebody else, God will bless both of you. I need you to look at whoever's on your row and tell them I'm excited about your future. When I give God this last praise tonight, it's because I have confidence. He's gonna bless both of us. He's gonna open a door for both of us. Let the redeemed of the Lord open up your mouth and give God a shout like there's enough glory. I, I'm done. I'm done. I just want you real quick. Would you just tell two people around there, tell them I'm excited about your future. I'm excited. I'm excited about your future. I'm excited about your future. He's going to do it for both of us. He's going to make a way for both of us. I want to, I'm going to pray over you. That's the mantle that God has given me for 24. Would you lift up that hand? I pray first for every member of your family that is incarcerated. I pray first for every member of your family who is facing a legal issue. I pray for every person who finds themselves shackled by a system that doesn't want them to be free. I want you to lift that hand just a little bit higher. I pray for your siblings. Listen to me softly, sir. I pray for your siblings. Y'all ain't even going to believe I'm going to say it. I'm going to pray for the siblings that don't speak to you. I pray for the siblings who've been different since mama died. Praying for the siblings who have a problem with your success. I pray for the siblings, here it is, who hold odd against you over something you had no responsibility for. I pray for the grace over the siblings who weren't there in support over your parents' last hours. I pray for your siblings who resent you because of the power of God that's on you. I pray for your siblings. Hear this. I need three of you to just let it out. I pray for the siblings that owe you an apology. I pray for whoever you have prayed for. Did you hear what I just said? I pray for whoever you have prayed for. I better say it again. I am praying for whoever you have prayed for. That they'll find their way back into the house of God. They'll find their way in right relationship. 
that they will align themselves with the will of God. And I believe it to be so. Those of you who are in this room, those of you who are online, your faith comes into agreement with my faith. Would you give God your best sound of glory right there? Come on, I can't hear you. I say, give God your best sound of glory. While you're standing, our pastor's coming in just one moment. I just want to say something to you. Who am I that he is mindful of me? Not only did he create me just a little bit lower than the angels, but can you imagine that God blessed you so much? He thought of you so much that this year he decided to give you an extra day. Not 365 days, there are 366 days this year. God says, I'm giving you an extra day to get it done. Give you an extra day to fill out the paperwork. Give you an extra day to submit your proposal. I'm giving you an extra day to finish your book. I'm giving you an extra day to go find a new place to live. Give you an extra day for you to get your business off the ground. That's how much God thinks about you. That God would not just give you an extra day, but God would make it an Olympic year. Made it an Olympic year. Here it is, which means nations are competing for your position. People all over the world want to stand where you're getting ready to stand. People really think they can contend with the favor of God that rests on your life. I don't want you to become so local that you stop thinking global. You get ready to take the job of somebody in China. You get ready to take the paycheck from somebody in India. You get ready to take the real estate of somebody from America. Y'all ain't saying nothing. You get ready to hold the office of somebody in the UK. There's a global mandate that is on your anointing. Can you imagine this is for athletes? That athletes have to train four years for one summer. Four years for one summer. I'm so grateful that everything you've gone through since 2020 was training you for what's going to happen in July. I really thought y'all was going to clap better than that. That's what God will do. And he's going to do it this year. Ladies and gentlemen, I want every single person who can and will, I want you to partner with me. Hear me. Those of you that can and will, I want you to partner with me with a seed of 366. 366. For you clutch your pearls and have an asthma attack. There's, a, there's just a dollar for every day I'm expecting to be blessed. 366. Listen to me. At least 12 of you. Well, uh, Dr. King said you can't call yourself a leader and nobody's following you. You're just taking a walk. Uh, so I was going to ask for 12, but I lead by example. I want 11 of you uh, to join me in a seat of 366. If you'll meet me at this altar, 11 of you, I want you to come as quickly, as expeditiously as you possibly can. Every single one of you who can join me in that seat. Thank you so much, Bishop, for always leading the way. Thank you. I'm still waiting on nine more of you to come. I'm waiting on eight more of you to come. I'm waiting on seven more of you to come. I'm waiting on six more of you to come. Isn't it crazy the only time we don't shout in church is during the offering? Amen. I'm waiting on five of you to come. I'm waiting on four of you to come. I'm waiting on three. Come on, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Thank you so very much. I'm waiting on two of you to come. Sonny and Shea, Peaches and Herb. I need two of you to come. Come on. Paul and Silas, I need two of you to come. 
I'm only waiting for one more to come. The Bible says that he'll leave the 99 just to go get the one. Wherever, come out, come out, wherever you are. Thank you for that one. Yes, thank you, Bishop. Is sharing uh, for Lady Patrice. Thank you so very much. We're in the overflow. Praying for other people breaks the spirit of jealousy. And it breaks the spirit of competition. I want you to stretch your right hand to faith towards this altar. Repeat after me exceedingly, abundantly, beyond what they can think, what they can dream, what they can imagine. Amen. Bless the Lord. Would you clap your hands for every person who sowed that seed? Come on, clap till your hand turns red. Oh, you see it. Thank you. Keep clapping. Keep clapping. I'm going to ask if I can, 40 of you, very quickly, 40 of you, I want you to partner tonight with a seed of 100, a seed of 100. I want you to move at the speed of your expectation. If it don't matter when you're going to get blessed, take your time. But if you believe in the gospel, that God can do it the same night, I want you to move in what Shakespeare calls majestic instancy. It's faster than already and sooner than not yet. 40 of you, if you'll meet me at this altar, 40 of you, begin coming. 40 of you, I need you to begin coming. Thank you. Balcony, thank you. We all we got. Thank you. 40 of you, once you get there, don't leave. Stay right there, 40 of you. If nobody on your row has moved, look at them and say, are you the one or should we look for another? Amen, come on. 40 of you. Come on quickly, please, sir. Thank you, ma'am. I'm grateful for you. I'm grateful for you. I need three more of you to come. You right there. You think you done slipped through. Come on. I'm waiting on you. Stretch your right hand to faith towards those who are at the altar. Two more of you are coming. I need you to move quickly. Move sprightly. Come on, two of you. Before my voice gives out, I need you to come. I'll call for it in sign language. Come on. That's all I know. Come on. Amen. I'm waiting on one more to come. Stretch your right hand to faith. Repeat after me. Press down. Shaking together. Running over. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you clap your hands? Those of you who are at the altar, if you'll just touch the altar as a point of contact, as a point of agreement. Come on, clap your hands. You got to do better than that. Clap your hands. You Come on. Clap your hands this evening. It's all right. Thank you so very much. Everybody else in the room, if you'll listen to me with rapt attention, everybody else in the room, would you get your best seed as close to 52 as you can? I want you to get your best gift as close to 52. Pastor, how close? 50. Amen. <laughs> I want you to get as close to 52 as you can. Pastor, why is that? It's 52 weeks in the year. I'm believing for a blessing every week this year. Can you imagine there not be a week that goes by that you don't get good news? Not a week goes by that you don't get a refreshed testimony. If you don't have 52, get as close to it. But I want everybody coming now with your best gift. If you didn't give in 366, didn't give 100, get your best gift as close to 52. Would you please meet me at the altar now? Very quickly, please. Come on, balcony. Don't leave me by myself. Come on as close to it as you can. All you have is 20. Come on. All you got is five. Come on. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. I'm grateful for you. I'm thankful for every gift. I'm appreciative for every giver. Come on.
come on quickly. Thank you so very much. Thank you so very much. Would you do me a favor while they're coming? Would you start clapping for them? Come on, clap till your hand turns red. Clap for them like you're excited about it. Those of you who are online, we want you to partner with us. We want you to sow with us. We want you to share with us. I'm two minutes before my time is up. I want you to stand, please. My time is up in two minutes. I cannot call myself a man of God. Listen to me, everybody is standing. I cannot call myself a man of God and raise money and not raise people. I don't care how late it is. We got time for somebody to get saved. We got time for somebody to join the church. I want to say something. Bishop Ellis, you're not going to believe it. You are not going to believe it. Uh, but uh, George Bonner has come back with the unnerving data, y'all are not going to believe it, that 92%, Pastor, 92% of believers, 92% of believers have never won a soul for Christ. 92%. Here it is. I don't need you to turn to your neighbor. I need you to look at me. Can you imagine that you got New Year's resolutions and not one of them was to win a soul? Can you imagine you on a Daniel fast and in your fast you haven't prayed, God, use me to bring a soul. Balcony, y'all stay with me. Isn't it crazy that 20% of the people in this room got a vision board and wrote nowhere on the vision board, soul winner. We have biblical evidence of the church growing by 5,000 people in one day and guess what, y'all? They did it without Facebook. They did it without radio. As of 2016 in America, as of 2016 in America, Christianity is no longer the fastest growing religion in America. It's now Islam. Pastor, how is that possible? It's possible because the saints are shouting and the Muslims are witnessing. Oh, uh, Y'all done got mad right there. But we got to go back to becoming a soul-winning church. Uh, Y'all didn't get excited about it. I said we got to go back to becoming a soul-winning church. It is your job to catch the fish. It is your pastor's job to clean them. And tonight, here it is, we're going into uh, overdrive. You're going to help me open the doors of the church. I don't have much voice left. I'm flying at half past. The gas light is on and blinking. So I need y'all to help me open the doors of the church. Virtue has gone out of me. I need you to help me open the doors of the church. This is how you're going to do it. You're going to find somebody in this room who you don't know. Find somebody whose name you don't know, you never met before in your life. You're going to walk up to them, and you're going to ask them a question they're not prepared for. Here's the question you're going to ask them. Are you a member of a church? Here's the catch. Are you a member of a church? Here's the catch. Are you a member of a church where you're growing? Everybody has membership, but not many people have discipleship. Are you a member of a church where you're growing? If they say yes, cry out loud, praise the Lord. But if they say no, I want you to bring them to this altar. If they say I'm not sure, I want you to bring them to this altar. If they try to avoid eye contact, bring them to this altar. If they ask you, where are we going to eat after this? Bring them to the altar. That's the first question. Listen to me. The second question is going to throw them off. Listen to me. Here's the second question. Y'all ain't going to believe it. When you get to heaven, when you get to heaven, they will never ask you. When you get to heaven, they will never ask you at the gates who your pastor is. They only want to know who your Savior is. And so you're going to ask them this second question. I want you to stay with me. Second question, is Jesus, here it is, your Valentine? Would you just say, Pastor, 
Is Jesus your valentine? In other words, do you feel a certain way when you see him with somebody else and he ain't been with you? <laughs> do you get excited when you see something that reminds you of who he is? Do your ears perk up when you hear somebody mention his name? Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. How, do you like talking to him every day? Is Jesus your valentine? If they say yes, cry out loud, praise the Lord. But if they say no, I want you to bring them to me. If they say I'm not sure, I want you to bring them to me. Come on, let's go to work. Everybody, there's souls that are going to get saved tonight, and the church is going to multiply. Everybody move and talk to somebody, please, sir. Are you saved? You got a church home? Have you given your life over to God? If there's one here tonight, I need you to come. Somebody online, I need you to come. On the balcony, holler if you hear me. I need you to come. If there's one here tonight, Lord, save somebody. Lord, set somebody free. Enlarge the ministry. Mount Tabor, I need you to shout for this young lady coming. Here comes somebody else. Come on, give God glory. If there's somebody else, I want you to come. If there's somebody else, I need you to come. Are y'all going to shout for this young man coming? Are you going to shout for this mother coming? Come on. Come on, y'all still ain't giving God glory. Everybody in the room, Pastor, I'm getting ready to turn it over to you. Everybody in the room, repeat after me. It's a terrible thing. Come on, repeat after me. It's a terrible thing. If y'all don't shout over these people coming right now. Everybody, repeat after me. It's a terrible thing. Say it's an awful thing. Say it's just a bad thing to do. To lie in the house of the Lord. Look at the person beside you and say, I'm not calling you a liar. Look him in the eye and say, I just want to be sure you sure. Come on, ask him, are you sure you saved? Are you sure you got a church home? Are you sure you've given your life over to God? Here comes somebody else. Come on, y'all ain't clapping good. I don't know how your faith is wired, but I'm believing God for one last soul tonight. When that last person comes, I need y'all to get as excited as I am. Would you do a row check and make sure your whole row is saved? balcony everybody up there i want to make sure you got a church home i want to make sure you've given your life over to god we are so grateful heaven is rejoicing angels are celebrating on this night we serve a god of redemption he is the joy of our salvation would you clap your hands for those who have come come on clap your hands in the most energetic and zealous way that you can. Help me, help us receive our pastor at this time. Come on, give God some praise for him. Come on, let's give it up for Dr. Brian on tonight. Come on, let's give it up for Dr. Brian on tonight. I was just hoping and make, looking and trying to make sure nobody from Mount Tabor came up to the altar to say, I'm not in the church <laughs> where I'm not growing. What a word on tonight. Would somebody celebrate the word of the Lord? Come on, y'all ain't acting like God talked to you. If you heard from God tonight, I need you to go ahead and act like it. Come on, let me hear a sound. Go ahead and act like you heard from God tonight. Now here's what I need you to do. Shake someone in your right and left and tell them, neighbor, as of tonight, I am your prayer and your praise intercessor. 
I am committed to making sure that this year is your year. Anything coming against you, trying to block you, trying to stop you, trying to undermine you, I am assigned to shut it down. And I'm about to lift my voice and give God my first prophetic. No, you only doing it right. I need you to grab him by the hand and open up your mouth and give God the praise. Because your shout is about to open some doors and make some ways out of nowhere. Somebody! Oh, bless your name. Now listen to me. Listen to me. I need you to remember who is on your right and left. If you don't know their name, get their name. And look at them and tell them, I'm responsible for taking you across the finish line this year. I'm responsible for making sure you end this year strong. And the man of God says, whoever you pray for, it's going to be their year. So make sure you got their name. Make sure you got their name. Because you're responsible for making sure they end this year strong. Would somebody find God for the word of the Lord tonight? Now, here's what I, here's what I want to release. The night they prayed, they saw results. I want you to help me declare that this is not just going to be the year of answered prayers, but immediate results. That's a little too weak for me. I, that's a little too weak for me. Now, if you tired and you finish, you could go home, but I need some of you to clock in tonight because we ain't letting this word slip by us tonight. I need you to declare that this is going to be the year that as quick as I pray about it, as quick as I release it in the atmosphere, as quick as I release my faith for it, I'm going to reel that thing in. Would somebody praise God that this is going to be the year of immediate results? If you all really believe that, you would have been praising God like when you walk out of here tonight. You're going to meet something you was expecting God to do. All year 23. I can give you 60 seconds to have a celebration for what you see God get ready to do in your life. One, two, three. Look at your neighbor and say, now listen, if you are my praise intercessor, you can't have that kind of dead shout tonight. For what I'm expecting God to do in my life, I need you to raise your expectation and crank that thing up like God is getting ready to show. We get ready to go, but I'm going to give you 60 seconds to have a celebration like you see manifestation on the way. One, two, one, two, three. miracle out. Tell him, help me push this answer out. Help me push this breakthrough out. I got to give God praise like this thing is closer than it's ever been before. I need you to go ahead and give him some glory like we get ready to turn it up. Raise your expectation. Somebody put out. there's a door open to me a great and effectual door man of God said there's an open door tonight through prayer 
But he says, the doors open and there are many adversaries. I'm going to ask you to release one more shout. And this shout, the Bible says, shout unto the Lord with the voice of what? Fire. What's connected to your shout? Fire. If you're all ready to go home, see the door, man. Let's do this. If we can do this, let's do this. All right? What's connected to your shout? Fire. What's triumph? Victory, right? Yeah. Every hindering spirit assigned to your open door. When you release this next shout, every hindering opposing spirit designed to block you from going through your door, your shout is going to cause victory over every opposing, hindering, adversarial spirit. Now when I count to three, I need you to open your mouth and shout like you believe God for victory. One, two, three, shout. Y'all playing, y'all ain't shouting. Let his enemies be scattered. I gotta go. Megan Cox hungry. I gotta go. <laughs> she hungry. Help me find God for this awesome cadre of pastors and ministers that are here tonight. We had the mother of our fellowship here, my pastor, Bishop Helen McPhee. She's already gone. Let's thank God for her. Bishop Denzel Rule is in the house tonight, my friend and my brother. God bless you. Pastor Devad Francis is here tonight. Let's thank God for him. Ram Dino Cartwright is here tonight. Let's thank God for him. And the prophetess herself, Carol Moss, is in the house tonight. Amen. Pastor Kellen Russell was also here. We find God for him in his absence. I think I covered everybody, right? Amen. Thank God for all of you. Those of you who are visiting with us tonight, we value your presence. We thank God. If I see some members, a lot of glory here. You know, prophets don't ever come and don't bring the crew. God bless you. Good to see all of y'all on tonight. Amen. Get ready for an incredible year this year, my brothers and sisters. But here's the word of the Lord. Raise your expectation. Whatever you came here tonight expecting is an insult to God. And the challenge for us tonight is that we got to kick it up a notch higher. Whatever was on your vision board, go and reevaluate it. And let the Lord direct what it is he's about to do in your life this year. You will not die of cancer or any kind of disease, sickness, or infirmity this year. If you are under this prayer anointing tonight, this is your year not to die but to live. And we seal the word of the Lord over your life on tonight. One more time, can we thank God for our founder who stepped out early? Let's thank God for him on tonight. God's blessings on him. Hands are stretched right across the room as we prepare to go on tonight. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for this gift you have brought to us tonight, this great man of God. Thank you for the weight of the anointing on Dr. Jamal's life. Thank you for the grace you have given him for the globe, for the world. Thank you for his faithfulness and his commitment to the assignment. Thank you for what you are doing through him and with him even at new birth. Thank you for what you are causing him to do to disrupt, the shift, the change, to bring into alignment in Georgia keep him Lord can somebody just ask God with me to keep him preserve him for a generation God him for a generation Holy Spirit I pray that you would lead him increase his level of sensitivity to you because you have granted him a level of influence in this time and I pray mighty God that you would cause him to be a good steward we cover him in the blood Satan the Lord rebukes you when you see this man of God you see the blood and no weapon formed against him shall be able to prosper cover his children cover new birth missionary Baptist church 
thank you that you who have begun a good work will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Thank you for these pastors and leaders that are in this room. We cover the pop conferences. Pastor Francis, get ready to convene that meeting. We pray, almighty God, that this city, this nation would be shaken by a revolution of the glory and power and outpouring of the spirit of God. That no demon of religion will be able to confine what you are about to do. Thank you that there's a release of oil like we have never seen before. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. Hearts cannot even begin to perceive what you are getting ready to do in the midst of your people in this season. Satan the Lord rebuke you. We shut down your works this year as consecrated. You have no win, you have no victory. Not this year. We give you praise for the people of God under the sound of my voice tonight. Thank you that this word is not suspended in the atmosphere, but it rests in the lives of your people. And there shall be a performance of that which you have spoken. And your word shall not return to you void, but it shall accomplish that which you have set it out to do. It is unstoppable. It will not be blocked. I give you the praise and I give you the glory that everything released in this house tonight, by the end of 2004, we shall see it fully manifested in the lives of your people and we give you the praise and the glory and the honor as we leave this place but not your presence go ahead of us and make crooked places straight rough places smooth cause mountains and hills to be brought low and valleys to be exalted let your glory be revealed and let all flesh see it together for the mouth of the lord has spoken it and the people of god say God bless you, love you, have a great night. We'll see you on Sunday in the will of the Lord.